His research areas include computer <clears throat> network, cyber security, and forensics, and machine learning with four published patents to his credit. He has shared several technical has reviewed of many international conferences from Springer and IEEE. His outstanding contribution have earned him the Best Teacher Award, Best Researcher Award, Best Teacher <laughs> Design Award, <laughs> and was Best Personality Award, among other honors and awards. <laughs> Dr. Roy will share his valuable <laughs> insight and experience on the topic of cybersecurity, which promises to be the informative and insightful. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Nihar, Nihar Ranjan Roy. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Shivaniji, for the uh, one beautiful introduction. Though it, uh, uh, while you were reading, uh, I thought uh, you were reading someone else's profile. I'm a very simple person, a passionate teacher, of course. Uh, so uh, without wasting much, uh, much of the time, uh, let me come to the business. Uh, the topic which uh, I have decided uh, for today's session is uh, the growing importance of artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. Though I was given a broader theme of cybersecurity, but within uh, last few months and years, the way the entire landscape has changed uh, with AI, the cybersecurity is not going to be untouched. It is also uh, going to change uh, tremendously. And we are a late uh, comers into the field of cybersecurity, as it is evident that if you see the computer science and its allied branches, which uh, has come up into the academia, recently uh, the universities have come up with the BTEC in cybersecurity, right? So a dedicated cybersecurity professionals or the professionals having a uh, sound foundational uh, degree in cybersecurity is less and that is why there is a challenge in it but nevertheless uh, what we have been doing with the uh, traditional tools it is not going to work like that uh, and uh, cyber uh, artificial intelligence is going to impact that field also so i wanted to uh, highlight some of the areas some of the questions which might uh, uh, come up uh, in your mind when it comes to uh, uh, how AI can uh, affect uh, cybersecurity or how the cybersecurity tasks can be taken by uh, AI. So this is uh, my agenda for today's uh, talk. Uh, uh, first, I will describe uh, a, a cybersecurity threat landscape. What is the challenge and what are the trends, modern trends here? And how AI is revolutionizing cybersecurity uh, with respect to machine learning, deep learning, and natural language processing. After that, I will uh, discuss AI for incident uh, response and remediation, a role of AI in uh, identity and access management, benefits of automating cybersecurity process with AI. If we do this, then what are the benefits? AI-powered cybersecurity tools and technologies, which are there and how it can be used. Uh, ethics. Ethics is a big uh, uh, word uh, in uh, limelight today. Uh, how ethics, uh, the ethics of using AI in cybersecurity, how it is going to be affected. The risk of over reliance in AI in cybersecurity. Can we rely completely on AI in the field of cybersecurity also? Uh, and if there are certain risks, then what are those risks? Uh, I, I will discuss that also. A human element in AI powered cybersecurity. Uh, if we do AI, then uh, does it mean that a uh, human element will be nullified or the human element is going to be there, right? And then some best practices, real world examples of AI in cybersecurity, uh, future of AI in cybersecurity, challenges of AI enhanced cybersecurity post COVID, beyond cybersecurity where AI can be used in IT security. Uh, takeaways and recommendations. This is my agenda for today's talk. Uh, uh, Shivani ji, how much time I have? Sir, around one, uh, 45 minutes to one hour, you can continue. Okay. So accordingly, I will choose my slides because my content seems uh, more than uh, this. So I will choose accordingly. 
Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. So, one second. Okay. So, uh, it has been uh, seen in the uh, past uh, few uh, years, especially during this COVID uh, era, that there is a sharp increase in cyber attacks, right? And uh, these attacks, why these attacks have increased? Because if you see, the internet uses is increasing day by day. Uh, earlier, uh, if uh, ten, 10 years back, someone used to say that uh, you will find that uh, we people will be on the internet online 24 hours. It was a joke a kind of thing, right? How people can be on internet? Because during that time, uh, internet was quite uh, expensive, right? People used to switch off their routers after using uh, internet, right? Uh, bills were quite high. Uh, monthly bills were uh, normal. Minimum uh, bills were around 900 to 1000 rupees ago. Uh, above but you see uh during lockdown uh the life uh, uh switched from common highway to uh, cyber highway and offices schools research assignments everything was on this and people started doing those banking applications and uh, started using it trading if you see the number of increase of uh equity users or uh, share market users increased many folds many folds twice or thrice it has uh, come up, right? And uh, 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 cryptocurrencies came up and the, the participation of students particularly um, in this uh, uh, market has been uh, quite uh, large, right? And this lucrative area attracted the cyber experts or cyber hackers or the people with the intentions. And they have also earned a lot. Their business has grown. And in a legal terms, if you see the cybersecurity cases have arised. Right. And not only this, if you see, uh, 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 because of this, the government and other agencies, they have also uh, felt the pressure to uh, provide solutions to these cases. Very few cases can really be solved. Uh, even if you see the uh, current scenarios in the legal terms, that the cybersecurity experts in the governments are quite less. Cyber security, uh, forensic uh, team members are uh, quite less. And cybersecurity, what we are calling it is a, uh, one broad area. It has many substrings, and those substrings are uh, really, really vast. As if in a, a layman's language, if I say that I'm a student of science, and you know that in science, physics, chemistry, mathematics, quantum, and what are all not there, right? Similarly, cybersecurity is a very vast area. So the government is also facing challenges in this uh, uh, solving the cybersecurity cases. But yes, uh, this is not an excuse. The need of an effective cybersecurity is uh, measures is very important, and this cybersecurity. Uh, preventive measures or measure to secure our uh, resources, digital resources is important and it should be prioritized. Nobody is going to break the lock of your house and steal something. These days it could be you are holding a phone and unknowingly something is being taken from your own, maybe your private photos, your uh, chat data, your Gmail data, your wallet money, anything. Now, why AI is important in this? Because uh, during this period, AI has also taken up a, a big leap, right? So uh, uh, generally it happens that if you see in the mother nature, the problem and the solutions exist together. So we are looking that uh, can AI be the solutions, right? So can they be uh, uh, there with each other, one problem creator and another is the problem solver? And uh, uh, recently, if you see uh, the uh, AI and the uh, uh, models like Chad GPT, uh, they have uh, created a big ripple uh, in this area. And uh, the number of users uh, it has attracted within a week is more than the users which uh, reach on the popular website uh, within years. Right, it's commercialization, it's integration with Bing and other applications, PowerPoint, Excel, even the traditional chat uh, bots that you have been using. Now the chat bots can be powered by ChatGPT. Right, 
And ChatGPT is the one model that has come up uh, uh, as first and people are knowing its name, but there are equally good models which are in progress or they are there. Uh, they are also known as LM, large language models. Alpaca is one of, one of them. Dalila is one of them. And few more are coming up. And uh, uh, apart from this also, if you see uh, auto GPTs, uh, when auto GPTs come, this uh, revolution uh, will be seen or felt in a very, very uh, big way, right? And uh, you cannot deny it. You cannot deny it, neither you can only delay it, but this revolution, uh, it cannot be uh, stopped, right? It, it, it will affect us. And here uh, we have to uh, come up with the solution. <laughs> now you see, the biggest misuse of the chat GPT, which was uh, of uh, which came into limelight, was the cybersecurity um, attackers started creating payloads using chat GPT. So, what, what does it mean that if you want to do something, uh, how to breach, right? You ask. Chat GPT that I want to do this without any sense, it gives you the solutions. And you copy that payload and you apply it and you fire it and it breaks all the, uh, it passes all the antiviruses and other things. So it was quite easier what used to uh, take time to create those payloads. So uh, especially uh, due to this only, if you see uh, our top uh, cybersecurity experts from India, as well as uh, even Elon Musk and uh, uh, from India, Pawan Dugalji also said that uh, this AI development should be stopped for at least six months. And uh, after that only, uh, it should be resumed. Now, why they are asking for the six months of time? Six months of time is required because AI has moved ahead. And the cyber aspect of this is really very dangerous something where the government agencies and law enforcement agencies they do not know how to handle these are not mentioned in the rule book if ai generated content is being used then how it has to be dealt if ai triggered attacks are there then who should be blamed for this there are many more aspects so uh, uh, so the legal agencies are also uh, borrowing some time uh, so that uh, we can handle the uh, cyber security uh, uh, challenges which are coming up and they are, they are uh, damn uh, serious. Even if you see uh, these days, even the, uh, knowingly and unknowingly, every country is creating cyber army and you won't be, believe but the cyber army is doing uh, a wonderful job of especially the Indian uh, cyber army and they are uh, they're doing uh, in a, a very uh, dignified and, and a professional way, protecting our country on the cyber front. Uh, new arsenals are being attacked, which uh, used uh, for attacking our resources. Some of them uh, we could not materialize, but yes, uh, cyber uh, attackers are attacking critical sites uh, of a nation's resources. So that protection and counter defense is again an aspect which has to be uh, taken care of. So here we feel that rapid development in AI could be used to uh, provide a solution to this. So cybersecurity current uh, threat landscape, most of this I have already discussed. Let us see, increasing frequency and sophistication of attacks. The number of attacks has increased and they are advanced. They are uh, not like old book uh, uh, attacks which can be caught easily. And some of the categories of these attacks are phishing attacks, the malware, ransomware, and social engineering attacks. No. Uh, during this period, rise of nation state attacks has also taken place. And then the nations are attacking each other. If you see and follow Ukraine and the Russia war itself, uh, okay, those uh, actual weapons are there, but the cyber attack is uh, playing a, a vivid role in, 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 in that war. And other uh, government agencies are silently supporting one or the other in this war. And during this, if you see uh, target of critical infrastructures, critical infrastructures means uh, infrastructures such as power grades, transportation systems, healthcare facilities, which can have a devastating consequences. Can you imagine that there is a blackout 
or 24 hours or the transform uh, partition system uh, comes at a halt right or uh, you go to the healthcare facilities and the healthcare facilities are at a halt it would be a nightmare nightmare and you see all these things in some or the other way are online right so they can be uh, penetrated now one of the biggest threat these days is an insider threat uh, it has been uh, a threat which is very difficult to figure it out what is insider threat Inside the threat includes both malicious and accidental, and their growing concern with employees and contractors being responsible for a significant portion of the cyber incident. So somebody inside the company itself is leaking or giving the information, or the contractor who has developed the software it has uh, uh, left something uh, for uh, knowingly, right? And uh, apart from these challenges, if there are challenges, uh, then the challenges grow uh, strong only if the solution doesn't exist. And if you see here, there is a shortage of cybersecurity professionals. The skills required, uh, they are not there. The uh, teachers are quite less in number, which are skilled for this. And uh, the biggest uh, challenge uh, with the academia is the universities and the colleges. They believe that like other subjects, the teachers are well equipped and they are not focusing on the training. No, cybersecurity is something where you need training, right? Because your teachers or the professionals who are there, they have not been trained for cybersecurity, like your uh, government and the organizations didn't focus on cybersecurity. Whenever we create a system, uh, generally it uh, the security is the uh, least priority uh, thing, right? Uh, uh, when you code, what do you code? You code uh, uh, only for the uh, a simple working model and you do not focus on the uh, cybersecurity aspect of it. As a result of which, when you create web applications, they are vulnerables. And uh, you see, your if your web, web uh, application itself is vulnerable, then your firewalls and IDPS, they are not going to do anything because there would be legitimate attacks where this uh, component will not be of any use. For example, you've created a website where there's a login page. And if you have not checked for a, a SQL uh, injection, then uh, uh, anybody with it, uh, knowing uh, the loophole of the SQL injections can exploit and extract the data from your database. Right, other systems are of no use. So this web application development, who should be responsible? We, when we teach courses like web security, then uh, the security should be a unit into that. Right, but the teachers, they are there, they may, so, may themselves may not be available, uh, aware about the cybersecurity aspect of the uh, web applications. So a training on them is required. And uh, this investment is also important and it should be focused that good experts should be called. Cybersecurity courses are costly. Those trainers who are uh, very good, uh, their uh, the fees is very high. Uh, so this shortage of cybersecurity professionals uh, is there but yes government is coming up with the universities which are dedicated to cyber security and cyber forensics a uh, new branch of computer science with cyber securities has come up and we believe that within a few years we will start producing uh cyber security professionals who can handle the uh, situations but uh, yes uh their task would be different not uh, uh, in the way that we are doing it today it would be in compliance with the ai that we are going to see. AI is going to take charge there also very soon. Now, the last is a compliance and regulations. What, what, what is this challenges? Uh, compliance requirements and regulations are becoming more and more complex and organizations face significant fine reputational damage if they fail to comply. Now, what happens if you are a banking application uh, company or similarly, you have your regulatory bodies and they have uh, some compliances to meet. And if you fail that, then you will be penalized. And their compliances forms or requirements are so stringent that it is very difficult to meet, keeping in view the uh, uh, cyber security attacks. For example, if you lose some money in a cyber fraud, if somebody says that the bank should uh, pay for it, then can you believe how the banks will uh, pay and how they will take the owners? So uh, these challenges uh, are there and uh, 
they should also be handled in a proper way. But yes, this is the challenge of a current uh, cybersecurity uh, landscape. <clears throat> Uh, how AI is revolutionizing uh, uh, the current digital space. Uh, it can be used to detect a threat, automate responses, user and entity behavior analytics. Now, this is important. Uh, generally, when we do write in applications, we do not do behavioral analysis. But uh, this uh, AI uh, these days does a, a behavior analysis also. And if you see, uh, for example, if you uh, if you log in right now from Meerut, and within ten minutes if you log in from Delhi, then uh, it is a suspicious activity from your account from in uh, from point of view of locational changes. Nobody can quickly go into that uh, fast uh, in a, in a, that place, right? So it is one of the aspect the system identifies these days that uh, uh, a malicious activity or a, a request login request has been generated, and it goes into a, a different level of uh, security. Right. In a normal, uh, for example, if you always log in from one place, the security is only password. But when you log in from a different uh, 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 location, it could be a two-factor authentication or some uh, questions they, they may ask uh, by detecting this change in the behavior. And this NLP uh, uh, and uh, is also uh, uh, an AI aspect which is doing a lot of buzzword these days, and it has developed a long way. Earlier, people used to make a fun of it because of the challenges it had, but it has uh, come up a long way with large language models. And pre predictive analytics is something of, uh, from the historical data. You can uh, predict and be prepared for that, what is going to be happen. So if you get the prediction uh, accuracy, then uh, in advance, you can handle these uh, challenges. So this is the cybersecurity landscape. Now, uh, machine learning, if we apply machine learning into cybersecurity, then the benefits could be improved accuracy, improved accuracy with respect to humans, right? They, they are accurate than humans. Real-time detections, right uh, within uh, though it is real time but it is not actually real time it takes some time but that time is as good as uh, real time and reduced false positive cases what is a false positive cases uh, something which is uh, there are two types of cases uh, uh, in machine learning one is uh, false positive and false negative so a case which is genuine for example if uh, there is a cyber security attack and you say that this is not an attack this is one error. And another error is it is a legitimate attack and you take it as a uh, not a, a cybersecurity attack. So they, are, they these two cases are called false positive and false negative or type one and type two error, right? And when we build a uh, machine learning model, then we take care of this. Of course, most of the systems have these rates because none of the models have achieved 100% accuracy. But that is not bothering uh, us because... Uh, 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 a very good, uh, uh, I forgot the name, person has said that all the algorithms in this world are approximations, but still some are useful, right? So even with those accuracy, which is not uh, 100%, still these are usable and uh, we should use it. And uh, the other advantage that it provides is scalability. Scalability, these models are scalable and it can be applied on any uh, uh, level or number of units. But the challenge with this machine learning is the data quality. Now, whatever is the uh, model that you uh, build here, it depends upon the type of uh, data that you have. And uh, data quality is really challenging. If you do not have the data sufficient in number, sufficiently uh, clean the quality, then you will never be able to uh, uh, build a uh, accurate model. Then false negative cases, of course, they are there. Adversarial attacks. What is this adversarial attack? Try to understand. Hackers may try to subvert machine learning algorithms by feeding them false data or manipulating the data in some other way. So if you give false data to the machine learning itself, then uh, can that uh, its normal behavior be changed? 
Right. And another uh, challenging aspect of machine learning is its black box nature. What does black box nature mean? You give the input, you get the output, right? But what is happening in between, you do not know, especially in the learning models like neural network, right? If you have some uh, someone in the nearby who works in the field of neural network or a neural network expert, you tell there are a lot of neurons inspired by the human brain, right? And they keep on calculating. The calculations are also known to you. But if given an input, which neuron is performing how and how it is going to uh, determine the final uh, result, it's it's very imp uh, difficult to say, almost impossible. So this block box nature, block black box nature of this machine learning is uh, uh, something which uh, hinders or doesn't allow you to go for the transparency. Uh, uh, next, uh, deep learning. Uh, deep learning is again a step ahead than machine learning. It can be used in uh, network traffic analysis malware detection, behavioral analysis, which we used to do using machine learning, predictive analytics, and auto automated responses. The only advantage over here is that it gives, it has uh, given promisingly uh, better uh, accuracy uh, with respect to machine learning, but uh, there are challenges uh, for this. Deep learning models require large amount of data. And they are resource intensive. This means the computational powers, uh, the hardware and the software that is required is quite high. So this is the challenge with the deep learning models. And interpretability. Interpretability means, again, it is very difficult to interpret how your algorithm is giving the desired results. Right? They do it, but it is, again, like a black box. Which neuron, which steps, and how it is being done, that is challenging with the deep learning models. NLP these days you see natural language processing. It uh, deals with processing the languages which we human uh, um, speak, right? And it has uh, received accuracy uh, in the recent past because uh, now why these things have happened only in recent past. I have been uh, telling you this for the last 10, 15 minutes that in the recent past, recent past, recent past, why everything has happened recent past? No. Uh, the branch started earlier, the initial work started earlier, but there was no such data. Big amount of large amount of data was not easily available and neither the computational power were there. All right. So slowly the computational power has increased, cloud has come up, right? Better algorithm has come up. And when all these things have come in a cohesive way, new technologies have developed, right? If you see deep learning came only after 2000, right? The major work started after 2000. And you see these days that even though internet was there, but uh, uh, if you are doing a programming, Google Colab, just to see if you go and click uh, colab.resource.google.com and you get a, a cloud with uh, 12 GB of RAM, 30 GB of space, and you write your programs. Even most of us sitting over here may not have their local computers with the 12 GB of RAM, right? And they are providing it uh, to you for free, right? So this computational capacity, GPUs, right? They have come up as a result of which this research has uh, gained leaps, right? A tremendous development. So you see uh, uh, some of the applications of uh, natural language process that has come up is sentiment analysis, named entity recognitions, topic modeling, contextual analysis, and threat intelligence fields. This all can be uh, uh, done using NLP. Now, let us see one or two from this. Uh, NLP can be used to identify topics and uh, themes in large volumes from the unstructured data. Now, what is this unstructured data? If you see, this unstructured data is the data which is available on your web, right? It doesn't have a format like our SQL data, right? And finding context or theme or sentiment from that data is challenging. So if we can figure it out from there and do a contextual analysis. Contextual analysis means understanding phrases and items with detecting sarcasm, 
Sarcastism means uh, like uh, uh, we pass a taunting sentence uh, 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 to somebody, right? Sarcastically. Uh, and can this uh, be identified? Now, yes, uh, the system can identify with contextual analysis in which context the communication is going on. But still, the accuracy is very uh, less. But uh, yes, humans can do this. Uh, the, just you see here the, uh, where the challenges are there, what uh, AI and ML cannot do this uh, <laughs> sarcastically ca given comments. The human can detect it quite easily, but still uh, they have to get accuracy over here. Challenges with NLP is language barriers. Now we develop a system which works only on English. It cannot work on Hindi, Bengali, Assami, right? So it is a challenge. And data quality, like all other uh, uh, machine learning or deep learning uh, models, uh, data quality is an important, uh, a big challenge over here. And limited understanding is again a challenge. What does it mean? NLP has limited understanding of nuances like humor, items, sarcasticism, and metaphor. If you see uh, the Terminator movie where John uh, uh, does a, a, a cracks a joke with the Terminator and all, the robot doesn't understand what is laugh, what is emotions, what is sarcasticism, what is humor. They do not understand that humor is, is something else, and it has to be dealt with what amount of weight, right? So incorporation of this thing is a challenge, right? But despite of these challenges, the challenges which I have told about ML, DL, and uh, this uh, NLP, uh, they are going to be part of cybersecurity. Cybersecurity uh, will implement this. Now, uh, AI can be used in incident response and remediations. Automated uh, incident responses can be created. Trend uh, haunting can be done predictive analytics can be done. They can uh, create decision support systems where they will uh, support the security uh, decision takers, uh, teams in uh, taking decisions, remedial automations. So what are the uh, activities which uh, uh, may be taken as a remedy if an incident occurs? as a part of incident response team, right? How quickly can you recover from a ransomware attack or something? So what are the remedies that can be taken? Again, here, this AI uh, can come into picture and it can help, right? But there are challenges again with the AI. The challenges is biasness. Can AI be biasness? Well, we people tend to be biased, right? For maybe I may be biased to my religion. I may be biased to my... Uh, uh, a gender, I may be biased to my alumni, I may be biased to my state, uh, 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 I may be biased to somebody else. Anybody could be the uh, reason for this biasness. But can AI also be biased? Right, this is something very interesting. Uh, yes, AI can also be biased, but not on the grounds like we humans do. They can be biased on the basis of the data which they have been fed, right? If the data is not balanced, if the data is not unbiased, then the AI system will also not be biased, right? So, uh, uh, for example, the prob problem of class imbalance problem. What is this class imbalance problem? Uh, suppose uh, I'm teaching you uh, uh, mathematics and English, right? And you have to appear an exam of 100 marks each. Out of 50 classes, uh, in uh, 45 classes I taught you mathematics, I taught you five classes on English. Right, then how can I expect that uh, you will score uh, equal marks in both the subjects? You have given more uh, time efforts on mathematics and you expect that you should get uh, uh, good marks on English. For example, uh, uh, disease detection section, uh, uh, machine learning module, for example, cancer. There are 10,000 records and 9,990 records are of uh, genuine people who are fit. Right, and only 10 cases are there who are cancerous. Then what will my machine learning uh, learn, model learn? It will learn how to detect a person is fit, but you gave only 10 cases to uh, detect if they are uh, cancerous or not. So the training on infectious people or uh, detection of the disease is less, right? So yeah, definitely it is a biasness and which is uh, quite different from uh, a human. Data quality uh, is again a big challenge, as I've been telling you since now, and resource intensive, the resources. 
now these resources are not only hardware for processing and software but the data storage data cleaning data maintenance right these are all going to be very very costly and challenges if we want it to be part of a response and evaluation team uh, another challenge uh, in cybersecurity has been AI, uh, that is uh, identity and access management, but I would like to skip this slide in interest of time. Uh, benefits of uh, automating cybersecurity processes with AI. What is the benefit if we try to use AI? Increased efficiency. The efficiency in comparison to humans would be quite large. Improved threat detection, the number of uh, uh, cases of threat detections would be more, and we will be able to detect more number of cases uh, in comparison to uh, what humans uh, do. All right. Uh, proactive defense. Uh, proactive is something, uh, uh, there are two approaches, proactive and reactive. Reactive is something where you give reactions uh, against an uh, event, right? Proactive means you can be. Uh, uh, ready uh, before the uh, action occurs right so ai uh, can provide a, a proactive defense uh, a step ahead uh, reduced human error since human uh, intervention is reduced right so uh, the, those errors which are committed by the humans right such as misconfigurations and missing critical updates this thing uh, type of things would be less if we apply uh, uh, ai uh, it would be cost save, uh, saving uh, cheaper, right? Uh, and of course, scalability is the uh, uh, advantage uh, which this uh, 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 AI automating uh, cybersecurity is concerned. Now, challenges. Uh, challenges is again limited access to the data. The quality of data and the volume of data that you uh, need to provide, they are in limited. False positive and false negative cases, they are there. Okay, and our uh, uh, attempt should be to minimize it, right? And if at all we get such cases, then they should be dealt and the rules should be designed so that these cases are dealt on a special basis so that next level of filtering is there and this can be handled uh, at least on the second level. <laughs> And uh, uh, the third challenge is expertise uh, uh, in cybersecurity field and the expertise in the AI field. Uh, the person having both levels of expertise is required how to implement it. So this is uh, these are the three challenges of these automations. Uh, what are the tools and techniques that can be used here? Uh, uh, technologies, right? So you see, uh, some of the examples of AI-powered cybersecurity tools and technologies are SIEM. SIEM stands for Security Information and Event Management Solutions. They use machine learning algorithms to identify and respond to security events in real time. This is a, a tool, uh, okay, helping organizations to detect and respond to potential security threats more quickly. So if you go to the industry, you find these tools. NTA, Network Traffic Analyzer. It analyzes the traffic which is going on the wire, right? Uh, for example, if you have to uh, catch a culprit, a militant, or a, a, a bad person, and if the bad person is uh, traveling from, say, uh, Delhi to uh, Merit, right? So where you will catch? On which road you will uh, put the barricades and the police must stand where, right? So they have to be on the roads. Right. Similarly, in the cyberspace, the road is the wire or the cable. So the network traffic analyzer is the component here, which analyzes the packets. It scans through the packets, right, and checks what is going on, what it is uh, like. You uh, physically frisk a person while entering a cinema hall or mall, right? Whether if it is is a car, a carrying some uh, uh, weapon or not. Similarly, this packets analysis is the best, but it is not possible to do it because of the lot of traffic. But this network traffic analyzer, and there are ways to do it. It is one of the best part of the cybersecurity and it never lies. It never lies. Most of the cases, it is very good. Uh, and uh, point detection and response. Uh, this is again an aspect. Th uh, threat intelligent platforms, tips, they use AI to collect, analyze, and prioritize threats intelligence, helping organizations 
to stay up to this uh, date. So this threat is uh, analyzed in advance that some uh, threat is coming up. Deception technologies. Now, what is this? This is an interesting one. Deception technologies use AI to create decoy systems and data to lure attackers away from the actual targets, helping to reduce the impact of unsuccessful attacks. So they will place a decoy that, okay, the, the, this is the actually genuine center and this is where I have to attack, but the genuine data or the source is somewhere else. And uh, these days, if you see the organizations and everybody is moving on the cloud, so cloud security uh, is a, a, a challenge. And uh, se securing cloud is something where uh, we all should be focusing on. Then benefits, AI-powered cybersecurity tools, improved threat detection, increased efficiency, proactive defense, reduced human errors. No need to explain these points. Now, ethics. What is uh, ethics involved when we uh, talk about AI in cybersecurity? Now, the, the five concerns which are important but not limited to our biasness, right? AI algorithms can be biased if they are trained on the data that is not representative of the entire population. Well said. So I, I said you that the data on which we are training the machine, it should be balanced. The classes should be balanced, right? And it should be true representative of the entire population. So true representative of the entire population means if I pick a sample from that, all the values should represent the entire populations, their classes, their numbers, their properties, right? If it is not there, then the result will also depend upon the training data set. And if the training data set is not unbiased, then the, your result will also not be unbiased. Okay, now this is again a very big challenge uh, here. Right, ethics, ethically. The use of AI in cybersecurity can involve processing of large amount of personal data, which can raise concern about the privacy uh, and data protection, right? So privacy, you see, privacy bill is still pending in India. And uh, uh, since the legal enforcement agencies are mostly silent, uh, we do not have strict rules. That is why our privacy is uh, uh, taken for granted uh, every now and then. Our data get leaks. Anybody sells our data for a, a, a 10 pesa, 20 pesa, and you get calls from property dealers and others. This should not be uh, happening, right? Our uh, privacy should be respected. Now, here for uh, AI in uh, cybersecurity, you need a lot of data for training. And during this training, our uh, private data may also get leaked. And uh, uh, unknowingly, knowingly, uh, we feel that we are safe, but yes, our data is already leaked. Big giants are already uh, spying on us. Uh, don't Have you ever wondered that all of you use Facebook? But when you log on to the Facebook, uh, uh, all of you have a different uh, a landing page. You have a product from Intra, somebody has a product uh, from uh, Amazon, somewhere else, how it happened? How 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 they Facebook knows that these these things you have seen in the recent past or this this are the advertisements that you may pop in, right? They are already they are already spying on us uh, since long and uh, everybody is silent on it uh, because of the benefit or because of the future which is coming on us where we will have to minimize our digital trusses. Uh, these days, if you see the young generation is uh, feeling like a star when they like uh, get uh, likes, comments on the uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. But uh, believe you me, sometimes it is better not to have your digital traces. And whatever you are doing it today, it is going to stay there on the cyberspace forever, forever, forever. Your, maybe your grandchildren, their grand grandchildren will see the traces. They will be able to track you back. Whatever you have done, you feel that you can delete everything. No, you cannot delete everything. You go and read the policies of the companies. They may delete from your account, but they keep the data for training purpose in their account. Accountability is again uh, something which is very important. AI algorithms can be difficult to explain the understanding. 
uh, in a, a normal code, you can say that, okay, this logic was wrong as a result of which I got the wrong output. But in a black box kind of model, it is very difficult to tell the reason that how it went wrong. There is no transparency, right? So who should be uh, held accountable, the organizations and uh, which biases uh, can be held responsible? It is difficult. And the security of uh, AI itself is a new risk. So AI system themselves should be secured first if they are being used here in this. Uh, some of the guidelines that uh, we may have is ensuring that all the algorithms are developed and trained on a representative and unbiased data sets, implementing appropriate security measures to protect AI-related security risks, and transparency and ac accountability of AI-powered cybersecurity decisions uh, should be taken care of. Uh, then protecting the privacy and data rights of individuals whose data is processed by the AI algorithm. Uh, this is something recently you might have seen that uh, 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 data from a, a top uh, company uh, got leaked because uh, the guy was used uh, chat GPT and the company had allowed it for code development and it pasted the code in the chat GPT window and it went to the chat GPT server for training because whatever you give, whatever you ask, they are also taking it for training. It is not they are replying it. Now you tell, you ask me that, okay, uh, how is uh, Jim Corbett or how is Danny uh, Tal or how is Masuri for vacations and uh, how much is the cost? Suppose you ask four or five questions to me like this. So will I not guess that you are in a mood of holidaying and you want to go out for holidaying and you are uh, uh, looking for venues which are, uh, depending upon your questions, maybe cheaper, maybe cooler, or maybe what kind of uh, resources you are looking over there? Right. So whenever you ask a question, the other person, other fellow uh, on the other side of the table and this AI systems, they capture those data and you have your account registered with them. So they know you and they know what is going on. So in, indirectly, your uh, privacy is also there with them. Don't treat that this AI are dumb fellows and they are not going to have it. And how your data will go, where it will be used, you never know. Right. So that uh, masking from uh, this is also important. Uh, risk of over reliance on AI. Can we rely on AI and uh, how far we should rely? What if we uh, over rely? So if you over rely, you give everything to AI that you do it and you pull up your hands, then those you know, false positive and false uh, negative cases, they uh, will be there, right? A uh, lack of context, AI sometimes may not provide you the context. Vulnerabilities, AI themselves can be vulnerable. So if you leave it uh, totally on AI and they are compromised, then, uh, then who will check, right? And human er error. Now, what happens? AI is not a replacement for human expertise and judgment. And then over lens on AI could lead to compliance or lack of critical thinking among cybersecurity professionals. So you see critical thinking is something there which is still AI is not there. And uh, human uh, brains are uh, the way we learn and develop. Uh, that is something uh, whether I don't know whether AI will be able to do it or not. But this is something where humans have uh, uniqueness uh, over all the races, right? And uh, this is going to be a winning factor for us. Uh, mitigating risks, what uh, could be the mitigating risk of this? Ensuring uh, cyber, ensuring that the cybersecurity professionals are trained to work alongside AI systems. So this is one thing that we have to do, conducting a regular assessment of AI algorithms to identify and read uh, then potential vulnerabilities. This AI algorithms, they learn, right? So you have to predictly check whether they have learned wrong thing or not. And if they have learned wrong things, then that needs to be removed from there, right? So the maintenance of AI systems will also be required, what I say, a maintenance of the AI system. Now, implementing appropriate control to prevent over reliance. So uh, this has to be seen uh, implemented as if you do not over rely on this AI systems. Now, what is the human element that can come up in this AI system? Humans expertise could be used by the AI. Context, humans are good in checking the context, changing the context. 
right and oversight and the trainings right so these are important things in which uh, this human elements uh, remain critical to ai power cyber security and uh, the ai powered cyber security system should have human intervention in this 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 forms right <laughs> now to leverage the benefits of both ai and human expertise it is important to strike a balance between the two right uh, though ai is going to uh, take uh, care of most of our tasks and automations but they both should be there as uh, i have discussed on my previous slide but uh, uh, what the further it includes ensuring the cyber security professionals are trained to work alongside ai systems so if you are a cyber security professional you have to learn ai also now please listen to this very 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 carefully we do have specializations, AI. Students come here that I am a student of AI. But AI is something which can be applied in any domain. Domain knowledge is important. You are a cybersecurity or a data science student. AI is going to be there, there also. IoT, AI is going to be there also. So irrespective of your stream, AI is going to be there everywhere. If you go on any road on the cyberspace, you will meet with this gentleman AI. You need to talk in its language. And if you want to communicate as a developer, then Python is the language. So all of developer students must learn Python, number one. Irrespective of your streams, you should learn AI. Then only you will be able to understand how it is working. Right. Next, implementing uh, appropriate controls to prevent over reliance. So you have to implement that we do not over rely. Give some weightage or uh, rules. You say that okay, these these decisions are to be taken by them 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 uh, AI systems. And if there are some more critical things, then it should be further uh, step by step. It should be uh, given, and finally, it should be identified by a human intervention. Right and encouraging uh, collaboration and communication between human cybersecurity professionals and AI cybersecurity tools and uh, professionals. They should work together. To, so then only this thing can happen. Uh, best practices uh, in case of uh, this. Oh, I'm overshooting time. I will try to wind up. Uh, so you can go through the identify use cases, data preparation, understanding AI algorithms, which algorithms can be fit human expertise to understand the cases, continuous learning, build it, check it, rebuild it, iterative process, integration with the existing system, apply it there, a governance and oversight. So you uh, do this governed by the clear policies. Your governing policies should be very clear. Procedures. Excuse me, sir. Excuse yes. Me, sir. Sir, myself, Dr. Shubham Kumar. Yes, Shubham Sir, uh, actually, uh, I want to ask one question from uh, Quantum AI. Yes. Sir, uh, in the last few days, I have listened a concept for marketing. The name is Quantum AI for auto trading algorithms. All right, sir. Okay. So, I mean, uh, we can use uh, Quantum AI auto trading algorithm for share market for buying and selling the shares. All right. So, what is your concern? Sir, uh, this algorithm, we can use this algorithm for. Uh, share marketing for uh, buy and sell in the shares? Uh, uh, Shubham ji, I'm not, uh, 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 first of all, a quantum uh, computing expert, but my team members are uh, here in the center. They work on quantum computing and quantum cryptography. But you see the FDPs which I have uh, attended uh, related to quantum uh, computing. Uh, a buzzword, if you see its implementation or programming scikit uh, libraries which they are learning or the programming which they are doing, they are all are simulations and there you keep on building the simple gates right so those algorithms or what the things which you are talking today maybe it could be a reality but i cannot see it in the near future right and especially right. the computer quantum computers uh, we had uh, i have not found any real evidence in the news or at least verified by the competitors for example if i do something and as a peer you quantify that nihar sir has done it i have not seen it 
right okay. so if they are there they are there in the background they are there in the research labs and the research is going on silently so uh, i believe i am a bit skeptic uh, what the question you are posing it is going to happen in there and if you see quantum trading you are using and as expected if it goes like that then can you believe what kind of havoc it will create even one person gets uh, uh, the person who runs this algorithm first sir actually i am listening uh, last few days about the quantum ai uh, uh, on google ads okay the use of quantum ai for the trading trading yes. algorithm it could be it could be subham ji but since i am uh, i am not a, a, a person over there and on what basis they are saying i still see it as a futuristic thing and even okay. if it it goes there it will not be allowed can you see oh. a, a battle where somebody is holding an automatic gun and a, yeah. a, a battle where you are giving a stick to the other person yes sir, yes sir. so if uh, others do not have that computing edge and somebody is having a, a out of the uh, world technology then what it is going to do okay all right so the governments will not allow even if it is there if it exists right and still okay. i see that, that it is a, a far flung uh, 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 topic or concept though people are uh, saying researchers are saying they talk about applications it could be applied in this way that way but how we are going to implement the qubit you see basically there are uh, differences uh, there are three four ways to apply the uh, build the qubit but which one is going to be better i, I do not find any reason or neither there is a company which says that okay i have implemented qubit on this and my quantum computing technology is this so that fundamental thing is not there so i i, I do not see it in a very promising way uh, right okay. Uh, okay, so sir. you should ask this question to somebody who is from the quantum field or if okay. you connect okay. to me, to me i will uh, connect you to the person who is there okay sir right. thank you thank you so uh, much thank you uh see some of the uh, tools which are there already doing dark trace cyclane Palo Alto Networks and IBM Watson for security. They are already doing uh, uh, implementations of AI uh, uh, in cyber security, uh, but uh, I believe they are not available for public till now. Uh, future of AI in cyber security: uh, something called exp uh, explainable AI, federated learning. GANs are already there. Quantum computing, as Subham uh, uh, already asked, and blockchain. Blockchain is there; people are implementing it. But you see, quantum, uh, Dr. Subham, quantum computing. We are talking here. Quantum computing is an emerging technology that has the potential to revolutionize the cyber security. Quantum computers could be uh, could be to use to break current cryptographic protocols, which would require development of new solutions. So you see, if the quantum computing comes. forget about the trading every computing system everything will be devastated in one go as if your borders are opened any any uh, if you have with this potentials aapka pura desh hai na aapka desh ka pura attack kare pura desh ke paas koi utchi nahi hai aapka resources power power kahin koi security nahi raha fir to the way they promise it right so it is more devastating i look at it as a more devastating than nuclear weapons राइट डाई हार्ट फोर्ड अगर आपने मूवी देखी होगी तो उसमें थोड़ा बहुत आपको ग्लिम्सेस मिल रहा है कि भाई साइबर कितना खतरनाक हो सकता है सो इट इज आई आई लुक एट इट लाइक दिस मे बी आई मोर नाउ चैलेंजेस एंड अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर ए आई इन पोस्ट कोविड इंक्रीज अटैक्स फिशिंग अटैक्स सब बढ़ गया है सो चैलेंजेस बढ़ गए हैं कोविड के बाद वी कैन स्किप दिस लाइट टेक अवे वॉट आर द टेक अवेज फ्रॉम दिस AI can help organizations to improve their threat detection and response capabilities. AI should come in cyber security field. Deep learning are powerful tools for threat detection and prevention, but they require significant amount of data and computing. Right? Human element remains critical in AI power uh, cyber security. So human factor should be there. Just to see, I'm not talking about the replacement. I'm talking that they should be there. while ai can bring significant benefits to it security organizations must also be aware of the risk of over reliance and ethics so this thing should be taken 
into consideration which uh, we uh, when we talk about ai in cyber security uh, strategies recommendations if you are an organization uh, start small and focus invest in the necessary data computing infrastructure to support ai ensuring that there is a human oversight and expertise in decision making consider ethical implications of ai and it now you see why i am talking about this data and computing infrastructure most of this universities big universities uh, where every university says that they are unique parallel they are number one in some or the other aspect everybody is a self proclaimed number one university with their own awards and honors and they have uh, better courses and all but how many of them have infrastructure to support ai computing apart from the normal desktops which, which are 16 gb ram right uh, how many of them have very few might have those so if you do not have even such uh, infrastructures how do you believe that you, your academia will bridge the gap with the industry and how much of training you are imparting to uh, your faculties, right? The technology has moved a long way, long leap. Your faculty needs to be given serious training with the specializations in which they are teaching. We need to focus on this. That there is a requirement in the industry, but we are creating those students which are not fit. But this is not going to uh, last very long. The digital universities will come up. Their course contents and expertise is much better and aware. And slowly, it will be uh, of no value. No value. So, uh, uh, training to the teachers, uh, quality training to the students, and resources has to be there to run these infrastructures. That's it from my side today. Uh, any questions I would like to have or discussions? Thank you, sir, for the valuable and interactive session. And no doubt you have opened uh, many research training areas where uh, faculty members or research scholars and students can do their work if they are interested in cybersecurity. Uh, so right now, even I have also heard that uh, there are various applications for uh, security purpose. Uh, blockchain has been utilized. Uh, and right now, uh, many of the application has been designed by using blockchain. So is it a feasible solution uh, for cybersecurity or for data handling? See, blockchain is there. Blockchain is a good uh, technology because of its distributed nature. Right. But uh, you will have to see where all it can be used and what is the cost of implementing this blockchain? What are the challenges this blockchain is uh, importing? Right. It cannot be applied in all the scenarios. It cannot be applied in uh, overnight. Right. The computational power required for it, the network infrastructure required for it. And can it be applied in all the scenarios where uh, the uh, digital traces are there? Right. We are interacting in the digital uh, platform in different ways. Can it be used to fit in all the scenarios that uh, this blockchain yeah. implementers will have to think? Okay, it's governance, yeah, it's uh, certification, that is okay. Healthcare, it is okay, right? So they're coming up. Let us see how long it takes to fully implement it. Yeah, because when it comes to cybersecurity, majorly people look for AI rather than other any application. Maybe just because it is easily, it, the computation cost is literally less as compared to other technologies. So uh, I will ask uh, participants if they have any query they can ask. Okay, uh, sir has shared his details. If you uh, don't have queries right now, you can take the screenshot or note down and you can mail or call him. And uh, with this, uh, I would like to request Dean sir for vote of thanks, uh, Dr. Yatin sir. I will hand over to Dr. Yatin Chaturvedi sir, Dean SCT. Thank you, Sir. I think it was a very, very wonderful session on the cyber security that has been taken by Dr. Nehar Ranjan Roy. He is the expert in this area. And I think he uh, satisfied all the contents of this uh, cyber security, which is aligned uh, to the industry 5.0. And uh, I think many uh, queries have been raised by the uh, different, different participants. And uh, 
uh, overall i think uh, this session was very good so i give uh, my sincere thanks to uh, dr nehar ranjaraji who accept our invitation for this uh, uh, very beautiful topic of the cyber security thank and gives a very beautiful content of the today please so uh, in the last i uh, give my sincere thanks to all the participants who have listened uh, carefully and uh, uh, we have benefited with this topic okay thank you thank you sir nehar ranjan sir thank you very much everybody. thank you sir thank you sir Uh, thank thank you. you so much, sir. And now we will conclude this session with this. And all the participants can join uh, next session tomorrow at nine a.m. sharp. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.